Hello dear friends, this is your Humphreys, and I'm glad to be here and share with you another word from the Bible. I want to share a little five or ten minute message with you, and I think it will bless your heart and life for the glory of God. I want to speak to you today on the fact that we have a, a commitment means contentment. In order to be contented, we must learn to commit our life to the Lord. And when you commit your life to God, you're going to find contentment. Because I believe the only contentment, the real only thing that can make you really content, is to be right with God and committed to Him. Commit your way to Him and He will bring it to pass. The Bible says in John, in the first, first John, first John, the first chapter, it says this, <clears throat> if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. If we, have, if we walk in the light, and that's the light of the world is Jesus, we need to walk in His light. And when we walk in His light, we will find then that, that this is the light that keeps us going and helps us to see where we're going. The light of the world is Jesus. Whatever darkness you're facing right now, Look to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm in the dark on this thing. Help me. Be my light. And he'll come to you. He'll reveal something to you. He'll open some door. He'll make a way somewhere. And you'll find the answer. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and hope in his word. And he'll see you through it. And then he says we have fellowship. It's good to have fellowship. It's good to talk to others about the Lord Jesus. Find someone that loves the Lord and will talk to you about him. There seem to be just a few, really, in this old world we're living in. But there are those out there that will love to talk to you about the Lord. And so seek to find fellowship with those. And then he says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now he's writing here to Christian people. And he says we need to confess our sins. Now we believe that when Jesus went to that cross and died for our sins, he paid for all of them. Because the Bible says he forgives us of all sin, A-double-L, -L, all sin. That means, that means past, present, and future sins. They're all paid for. All paid for. Jesus became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And so when you come to Christ, all your sins are paid for. Hallelujah. You're born again. And I thank God for that. But now, why does he say we need to confess our sins? Because we still sin in this life, even as Christians. But those sins are a different kind of sin than they are when we, before we were saved. There's two kinds of confessions of sin. One is a confession of for sinners. They've never been saved, and they say, Lord God, forgive me. Come in my heart and save me. Hallelujah. And he's forgiven of every sin. And Jesus comes in through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he's made a new person. And he loves God. And he walks by faith. He faces trials, but he comes through because he has the love of God in him. Now that's a sinner's confession. He confesses. Now you have a family confession. That is, after you're saved, you're a child of God. Now you confess because you're confessing as a member of the family. And you say, Father, forgive me. I'm sorry. You see, your sin is forgiven because it's a family it's a family sin. It's not a sin that will condemn you in the judgment when you stand before God. Because you've been you've been delivered and forgiven of all, all the sins that you've ever committed. But even after you become a Christian you have family mistakes, family sins, and you need to make family confessions, say, Lord forgive me. Forgive me. It doesn't change your condition before God. You're still a child of God. But when you ask forgiveness, it pleases Him. The Bible then says that we need to do this because it's an important thing to do. Over in Romans in the 8th chapter, it says that the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children and heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, you have everything God has and everything that Jesus owns you on because you're joint heirs with Christ. Hallelujah. And I want you to believe that. And that he, that if we suffer with him, we will also be glorified together with him. 
So, praise God. You may be suffering right now some, but you're going to come through it and you're going to be glorified. God will glorify you in Christ our Lord and our Savior. Over in John in the 15th chapter, Jesus said in verse 13, Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Greater love than no man that he lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus laid down his life for you and died for you. Paid for all your sins. And so when you realize that, that he rose again and he's coming back, you need to pray and say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Come in my heart. Help me live for you as the Lord of my life. And he'll come in. Pray that prayer and mean it as best you can. Praise God. And find your good church and go to and worship God. Praise the Lord. Now then, greater love hath no man than he lay down his life. After you're a Christian, you can still lay down your life. Laying down your life doesn't mean you have to just lay it down to die. It also means we need to lay down our life to him in order to live. In order to live for him. You must lay down your life. For he has said in John 9, 23, Whosoever will come after me, let him lay down his life. Let him deny himself. Take up his cross. That's, that's a cross of death through your spiritual life. Cross, lay, take up your cross and follow me. You must lay down your life to Jesus, dear friend, in order to find him. And when you do that, you'll find him and it'll be real. Jesus will be real. And you'll have the assurance that you belong to God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of His Spirit, and washed in His blood. This is my story, oh, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Waiting and watching, looking above. Oh, whis whispers, mighty whispers of grace and a worship of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praise the Lord. God bless you, dear friend. And may you learn to praise Him all the day long. He loves you very much, and I love you. May God bless. Amen.